I kind of want to finish the point, uh, you know, what, what I think about the, the pyramid, because I mentioned that this chamber worked. And I think, you know, when it uh, reached this resonance, it breached this remaining you know, few inches of granite that was, were blocking the shafts mm -hmm. and the energy shot out of the pyramid. So I think it was used for communication. And that would explain the uh, astronomical alignment. So, but the, the, the ends of those shafts in the queen's chamber aren't broken. Those doors are intact. They had to drill through them. No, I'm talking about the king's. Oh, the king's, king's chamber. chamber. Oh, yes. so you think that was originally sealed? Yes. Okay, I, yes. I, I understand. So I think the, the remaining few inches of granite broke You know, mm -hmm. when the resonance reached the desired magnitude right. and it was designed to break. Okay. And the energy went out. And I think uh, it was used for communication because that would explain astronomical alignment and uh, obsession of the ancients with keeping track of time. Mm -hmm. So throughout these ancient structures or even you know ancient history, we have obsession with, with calendars, <coughs> with keeping track of time. Mm -hmm. And astronomical alignment. So if you're building a power plant, why the hell is it important that it's like oriented exactly in the north, south? It doesn't matter if it's a power plant, but it matters if it's a communication device, especially for space communication. Hmm. Because, you know, to send a signal to space, right. you need to align everything and time everything precisely because otherwise it's not going to arrive. Right. So to me, as an engineer, you know, that's the only explanation I can think of of why a structure needs to be precisely aligned and why, you know, timing is important because that's how we do space communications now. Let's say you have a Voyager spacecraft mm -hmm. on the edge of the solar system. The only way you can talk to it if your antenna is precisely pointing to it. And because the Earth is turning, right? everything is turning, it's not just the orientation, it's also timing. And I think, you know, pyramids have the same, you know, signature. It's precisely oriented. And then you have this obsession with time, you know, timekeeping in different ancient cultures, which makes no sense, you know, if you're a primitive, you know, human being, uh, for your, you know, crop calendar, it doesn't matter, you know, the cycles of Venus and other stuff, mm. you know. <laughs> you can figure out how many days in a year and be happy with it. So why, why do you need equinoxes and other shit? It's only if you want to establish, you know, your clock, in the cosmic reference where you want to send signals you know across the solar system and then you know to send it you just you need to know time and you need to know the orientation because otherwise it's not going to arrive mm -hmm. so and and we see that you know in pyramids it's precisely oriented yes I mean, and yeah man it's, it's just a hypothesis but that's you know where my thinking have have led me yeah to. so how is it how exactly is it oriented it's, it's exactly pointed to the north right you know, north south like within like a fraction of a degree Mm. And are the shafts, are the shafts that come out of the queen or the king's chamber, are those aligned astronomically at all? Various people looked at it and they proposed uh, various hypotheses, but I don't think uh, those hypotheses hold water because, you know, there are so many stars and the stars shift. Mm. But, uh, and, you know, I don't pretend to be right about it. It's just sure. a wild idea. I'm just saying if you want to send a signal and you know that a certain party will be in a certain point, in space at a certain time yeah. and you want to reach to them you know that's where you point so i think you know the shafts weren't particularly pointing to any star or planet i think they were just pointing to a location of interest mm -hmm. where that signal was supposed to be received right so so i guess the hypothesis that i'm ascribing to it, it's you know the robinson crusoe the famous mm -hmm. uh, book so i think someone uh, got stranded on earth and they were desperate to send a SOS back. Oh, really? Yes. To, <laughs> and that's and the pyramid was their way of doing it. That's why it has this uh, geographical alignment and, you know, precisely timed. And you have this chamber that builds resonance. And then the uh, slabs break and the energy is released and your SOS is communicated. So I think it served its purpose. Yeah. Well, the it's also interesting there's sent. pyramids all over the world. Mm -hmm. Not just there. I mean, obviously, the Great Pyramid of Cheops it was, is like the most impressive one mm -hmm. with the most uh, enormous megalithic stones that are built into it. And with all those crazy chambers that make it look like a machine. But like pyramids are everywhere, all over South America. They're in China, um, all over Egypt. And um, 
I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I think it's totally possible that the human familiar? timeline wasn't linear. Yeah. Are you familiar with the, uh, is it cargo theory? Cargo cult? Yeah, cargo cult mm -hmm. theory. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, the Pacific Island? Uh, remind me. So during the World War II, mm -hmm. American soldiers dropped cargo on some Pacific Island. Mm -hmm. And I think they dropped it by mistake. Maybe they meant to drop it somewhere else, and there was a tribe living on that island. So the experience of the tribe, you know, there's goods dropped out of the sky. Then beings landed, and they gave these magic artifacts to them. And then they cured disease and shit. And when the Americans left, the uh, Polynesians, I think those were Polynesians, they started imitating what they've seen. They've built a wooden airplane. Mm. They put coconuts on their heads, yes, mm -hmm. to, to simulate headphones. Yeah, yes, they made, you know, goggles out of, uh, you know, bamboo, who yeah. knows what. You know, they even imitated the rituals. So I think you know, we have this uh, firsthand experience of what an encounter with a more technologically advanced civilization looks like. You know, people come from the sky, they bring technology that, that you consider is magic and then emulate it. Mm. And, and I think we see a lot of that, you know, all over the world. So, you know, pyramids, maybe some of them were built for the purpose, others were, you know, emulations mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, objects even in vases i think you know we have some that emulate artifacts that you know weren't produced let's say by you uh, by the people the vases are attributed to mm -hmm. so i think this this makes sense because you know look otherwise what the, what the heck is that? You know, it's just we're trying to recreate something that we've seen. We yeah, don't really know the function of. Certainly, there's a lot of pyramids in Egypt around the Great Pyramid that that are not impressive. They're not as impressive, mm -hmm. right? They're not perfect. They don't have you know, ten ton pieces of granite that are perfectly cut square. They don't have all the internal structures and internal shafts and chambers mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But they're all over the world. Yeah, right. Like they're they're. How do you get them in Peru and Mexico and you know, Central America and in in uh, halfway across the world in Egypt. It's just it just seems well, it seems th crazy to me. Well, I think whoever crashed on Earth, they traveled the planet because they were desperate to get out of it. Uh -huh. So they they went to different parts of it, and maybe they were even you know different factions in that party that you know. I don't even think they have to crash on Earth. I I think it could have just been humans. I could I think it could have been super advanced humans that got wiped out. That that's also possible, which which I think uh, there there is some science fiction stories, maybe even a lot of science fiction stories where the plot goes like this: so people go on uh, what's the word on interstellar travel, mm -hmm. you know, which takes years. Then they come back, and some calamity beset the planet. The yeah. planet is wiped, so you come back home, but there is no home anymore it's wiped out right so that's quite possible <laughs>